All right, there we go. All right, all right. Okay, I hope those folks at home can lip read the first part of this because I didn't have my mic on. <laughs> all right, in XML, um, we're going to store tags that are going to store, in addition to the data, they're going to store the structure of the data. And we're going to understand how structure. So we'll do something like this. We'll have a tag for the team. Now if you've done web development, you know, or you'll notice that this looks sort of like HTML tags. The notion of the less than sign, the greater than sign, the name of the tag in between it. We can then go in and we can specify a structure and say, here's an offense tag. And I'll just leave space for the, I'll just do the offense, but there, there'd be the same sort of defense stuff down here. The slash offense means that's the end of the offense section. I can then have a backs section, a QB tag, list all the quarterbacks in QB, fullbacks, list them, and so on. So this is data that the, the, the word that they use for it is they say it's like self-describing or semi-self-describing. In other words, it's better than this in respect that this is just sort of the raw data and you need something else to sort of piece it together and form the structure of the hierarchy. Whereas here, built into the data itself, in addition to the raw data, there are tags which indicate the structure of it. In other words, if I look at this, this guy right here, I know this guy is a quarterback who is also, by the way, part of the backs and who belongs on the offense and who, who belongs on this team. Okay? So, that's how we represent the user interface in our applications, is we represent it as an XML file. All right? And if you think about it, that's really analogous to representing our user interface in web applications as an HTML file, right? Or those of you that have done uh, ASP.NET, you have the ASPX file, which is effectively an, uh, a tag-based HTML or XHTML file that contains the user interface. All right? No processing logic, it's just a description of what the user interface looks like. All right? So, in our example here, we have a user interface we have a user interface that is an XML file. I, by the way, I ran uh, an EKG uh, on the squirrels that power this machine uh, on the desktop and they just did not seem to be up to this so I decided I'm just going to bring my laptop in. Okay, Let's run this application to see what it looks like. That way the, the seeing the XML might make a little bit more sense. So I'm going to go. Um, one thing I have noticed again uh, if you're experiencing uh, speed problems with your setup is if you have a device that goes a lot quicker. Now if you don't have a device um, I, I can bring devices for lab for you to work on. But like if I try to do an emulator on this, uh, on this machine, you know, it's a coin flip whether it's going to work or not. It might time out or, or whatever. So I, I typically when I do development, I'll plug in an actual one. The emulator is nice if you have a, a powerful enough machine and, and uh, you don't have a device handy, but I use the actual device here. So I'm going to run it, and you run it by clicking on the application right mousing and select run as Android application. All right, it's warning me that I changed the code. I'm not sure what I did. Maybe I just put a couple extra carriage returns or something. And away we go. And it's going to go and run it on my device. All right. And here is my calculator. All right, there we go. 
Notice what I have. Let's take a look at it. Let me zoom in a, a, a bit. There we go. Might be hard to see exactly what it says, but that's a banner that says example, simple tip calculator. There's a text box to enter in the price for the meal. All right. As you notice, no, 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 uh, no shortcuts here, you know, as far as, you know, uh, putting in extra labels or anything, you know. Um, all right. I then have a drop down for the level of service, which I can click on and choose either poor, average, or excellent. I can put in the amount. So $100 dinner with excellent service, the button, calculate tip, and it tells me the tip is $20 there. All right. Now I know this is a real rudimentary user interface, you know. But remember, our goal really here is just to get introduced to the way these things work and how they hook up with your Java classes and so on and so forth. So don't be overly concerned about the way that this looks. So in a nutshell, remember the stuff that you see. All right? You see a label, a text box, a drop down, a button, and then another label there uh, where the result gets put. It depends. Um, I, I, I've done, you know, I, I will on occasion go back and forth between it in, in doing it. You know, it's the right tool for the right job. You know, if I'm just, you know, if I'm doing something, yeah, I'll just drag the stuff over. Um, but it's good to be able to read the XML because sometimes with a GUI it's hard to get exactly what you want where you can go in there and you can change it directly. All right. Um, let's look at the XML and that's a good point. All right. Yes. I'm not, not understanding the comment. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, there might be other attributes to that, potentially. Yeah, that, that's true as well. Now, you might be able to get to them through the GUI as well. You know, um, you know it's a standard um, dilemma with, with uh, I don't know, I don't say dilemma. It's a standard situation for developers. You know, when you know the stuff up and down, you know, you just go into the code view, you know. If I have to do a query in Access, for example, I very rarely go to the query builder. I'll just write the query because I'm familiar enough with the SQL. If, however, you're less familiar with that, you can use a GUI to sort of help you out with that. All right. So let's look at this. First of all, this is simply a declaration saying that it is a uh, type of XML file it is. This is not, strictly speaking, an XML tag, so there is no closing one of these. All right. One thing that's characteristic about XML is that every XML file has a root element. All right. So the example that I drew here of the football team, all right, there's only one root element for it. You can't have a team and then another team tag underneath it. There has to be just one root element. If I wanted to, um, if I wanted to represent, let's say, several teams, you know, the entire National Football League in an XML document, then I couldn't use team as a top level element and have 28 or 30, however many teams there are. I'd have to make maybe league as my top level element and then have those 30 nested inside of there. All right. In this case, your top level element is going to be one of several uh, layouts. All right? One of several layout uh, controls. This is a linear layout, which simply means that the elements are just boom down in a line. If you notice my interface, it was just the first thing, the second thing, the third thing, and the fourth thing. They're oriented vertically. And then we have some of these other things here too. Uh, the deal with the width of it and, and the height of it and so on. Now, how do you achieve more involved layouts than this? You do that by nesting things. And again, 
that's, you know, we got to walk before we can run now. So we're just, we're, I, I really want to demonstrate how these things work together with our Java code to, to, to create, even though it's just a small application, but to work together to do a unit. All right. I then have a set of controls. Uh, I have a text view that says that that was my hello, your, you know, this application is such and such. I have the text field, all right, or the edit text field. I have the spinner control. I have the button control. And then finally, I have a text view for the label. Now, as was mentioned, you know, gee, this is a lot of stuff to remember. You can go into the graphic layout to create it. So in the graphical layout, you get essentially a little picture of what that is, and you can just drag and drop stuff onto it. So, you, you know, you need a going to be hard to see because this screwed with the resolution, resolution of my monitor, so I'm not getting the drop down. But you'll see, for example, that I could go and drag, here's a plain text field in here, or whatever other elements that you have. All right. So you can drag and drop and, and, and get the basics of it. Now, there's a couple things I want to, want, want to point out. First of all, notice, let's look at this very top text view. And that was a thing that when I ran it, it said the name of the app. Simple tip calculator. All right. Notice that in the, in the UI, it doesn't say the tech value of the text is simple tip calculator. It says at strings slash hello. Okay. Well, where does it get that from? It actually gets that from a resource file. That's the RES is resources. We'll come to these. Uh, we'll, we'll come to see more and more of these. But it gets it from a resource file called strings.xml. And in that file, there's a string with a name of hello. And that's where it gets the name to display in that hello banner. So if I were to change this, let's say, to Mike's simple tip calculator, and then run this guy again, Don't like that. Yeah. All right, now we look at it. And now the label says my. My simple tip calculator. Now, why do you suppose we do this? Doesn't that seem like a, you know, sort of a long, long way around to get a simple label? Okay. One thing, and again, I, I, I jokingly say this, or half jokingly say this, in all my classes, or nearly all of them, that whenever the question is why do you do something, the answer is almost always maintainability. Right? Now, then maybe, you know, if you really want to get the A plus answer, you've got you to gotta be able to back that up and explain how it helps maintainability. But by me putting the, the, uh, these string constants effectively, because that's what these are, in an XML file, I can then go in and anywhere where I have this app name or greeting or 
other things. I can use that in a variety of different activities, a variety of different user interfaces, and by changing it here, I change it throughout the application. So change in one place because this is external. All right. You see that so many times in software development, how you take and separate things into components. That way you can change a one, you don't have to mess around with the other ones. So that's one reason, that's a big reason. There is a slightly other, uh, uh, there's a second other reason that's slightly different to the first reason of why it's a good idea to have these things in uh, an XML file. Any thoughts? Besides maintainability. Exactly. Well, yeah. Well, that's what I, I, I suppose everything's maintainable, but, but that's what I meant. Localization. Okay. All right. In other words, um, I could have this default string file if I wanted to default, let's say, my application to English. I could then have a localized file for French where I would put in the translation of those terms. And then if the, if the device identified itself as being French, then it would, it would use the French labels or German or whatever. All right. So yeah, you're right. That's a flavor of maintainability. But it's distinct from that change it once and get it everywhere. All right. Um, so yeah, for those reasons, it's, it's good to do that. It's a separate file. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a separate file. It's not like an include. No. At string indicates that it's as a string in the strings file, and that's the name of the string. I'm going to cut this out, cut out this chunk of code. Now, now it, is, is string. No. You, 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 you would still say at strings, but then it would use the, the, the file that was defined as French for that. All right. If I code a literal there, instead of this, I actually get a warning. Maybe I have to compile it. Yeah, there we go. I have to save it. And if you look at the warning, It says hard coded string, hello, should use string resource. So it's nice in that, and it reminds you for that. <laughs> I have to say, when I was first doing this, it was like, grr. Because, you know, to do anything, you got to go to like two or three different files, right? But, yeah, you know, that uh, little work has to put in to achieve the benefit of that. So let's go, and there we go. All right. It will let you do it, right? It's just a warning, you know. It will roll size when it when you compile it, but you know, um, you're still okay. Um, the spinner control is what I typically call a drop-down list. All right, and notice that it has a different um, sort of constant here is pulling the values from an array. All right. So the entries from this come from an array. And if we look in the strings file, you'll see that we have an array called levels of service. And that's where it gets the three uh, um, values. Same idea as before. Uh, if, if we had another drop down within this application, um, we could ensure that there was some level of consistency. Alright? Oh yeah. 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 And also associated is, is the prompt. So, like when I run this app, I have to remember to set the 
set the screen not to go dark in 15 seconds here because I'm always racing. All right, when I click on that drop down, choose level of service, that corresponds to my service prompt that's there. And then the list of values populates from that. All right. Notice that the IDs are also not really hard coded. Those go in, or do those go? Those end up. getting put in here, but they're auto-generated. Effectively what this allows us to do, if we define our IDs in this, in this, when we get to our Java activity, we can point to that thing on the screen. That, th this sort of achieves a linkage between, um, this is one of the things that achieves a linkage between that XML file and the thing on the screen and the code that's going to go and manipulate it. So we'll see how that's used in a second. This is auto-generated, do not modify. Uh, if you modify it, I believe the next time you compile it, it's going to go and change it anyhow. But in essence, that's what that at plus means. It means go and add it to that resource file. All right. Questions? I believe not, yeah. I've never tried doing that, but... Um, yeah, I, I, I would think that's what, what it would do. All right. So, we have our business class, all right, that um, allows us to create a meal object, allows us to set the price of the meal, set the level of service, and then calculate the tip. We now have the user interface. What we really need now is that glue. That glue that binds everything together. All right? And this is going to be our activity in Android. Uh, an activity, again, is the uh, best thing I heard to de de define it or describe it is it's the code that, uh, or, or it, it is one thing that you want the user to do. So in this case, what you want the user to do, well, fill out the form for the, the price of the, meal and, and, and that, and then go in and, and uh, um, losing my train of thought, then, then going in and, and actually doing the, the calculation. All right, so that is in my source, again, same package, and it's my example activity. Maybe that's where I saw it, all right? If you mouse over it, it gives an explanation. An activity is a single focus thing that the user can do. Almost all activities interact with the user, and so on and so forth. All right, here are some things that, that uh, go on. This is what tells this activity, hey, you are using the main XML file. R means in the resources, layout, layout, main, main XML. So that's how it knows to use that main XML with um, this activity. So when I fire up this activity, that main XML gets displayed. You're going to see a lot of code that looks like this. Button calc equals parenthesis button find view by ID r.id.calc. Let's take a few 
seconds to make sure we understand what that instruction says because it, it might not be a hundred percent obvious um, what that instru instruction means so let me let me write it down on the page and we'll uh, discuss it yes no no this these two lines when you create the activity th those are created for you everything from here down I typed in okay yeah everything from there down I typed in these first two lines got generated as, as part of the activity all right let's write this down and let's analyze it button calc equals button find view by ID and I'm running out of space so I'll put it on the next line r.id.calc All right. Oh, definitely run out of space. All right. So really, this belongs right after the ID, like there. All right. That's bothering me. Let me rewrite it. Okay, there we go. All right. So let's break this down and, and see what this does. Pardon me? Looks a lot like JavaScript, that find view by ID. Exactly. So let's start here. Or let's just go around the statement and, and figure out pieces of it. Button calc. What is this doing? That's defining a variable called calc, and the type of it is button. All right. So, effectively, what I'm going to do is I'm looking for the thing on the page, or, or I'm creating a variable that I can use to point to that button on the page. Right? Because I want to do something with that button. I want to do something with a number of these controls, but the first thing that I want to do is I want to do something with the button. All right. So for me to do something with that button, I have to have an object reference to it. And that's what this is doing. I'm creating a variable called calc of type button. All right. Let's ignore this for a while. All right. We'll come back to that. Find view by ID, and as was noted, that's a, that looks a lot like JavaScript, where there's get element by ID. What we're doing is we're finding the thing in our XML file that has this as an ID. What ID? R.id.calc. Well, what in our XML file has the ID of that? This here button has that as the ID. In other words, you know, in my resource file is finding the thing that has an ID of calc. So it's finding that guy. And that, I assume, is some sort of pointer that points to the button. So this is saying, OK. I'm defining this variable called calc. Its type is button. What am I setting it to? I'm not setting it to a brand new button, right? So I'm not calling the buttons constructor to say equals new button. I'm saying I want this variable to point to that button that's already there. All right? How do I know which button I want? Because I could have a bunch of buttons on my page. I want the one that has the ID 
and my resources has the ID of calc. All right. Now, what does this do? The button in parentheses. It casts it. All right. Why do I, what does that mean to cast it, and why do I need to do that? Right, right. Find view by ID could return anything. Could return a text box, it could return my spinner control, it could return my label, it could return a button, it could return any number of different things, right? There's only going to be one find view by ID, all right? And we'll use that same, we'll use the same sort of line later on in the code when we're going to grab the value out of the out of the um, text box and when we, when we want to grab the value out of the spinner control and when we want to set the label. So we're going to use an instruction like this to point to all the different things on our page and those are different types of things, right? They're different controls. They have different properties and methods associated with them. As Ben said, they're subclasses of some higher class, right? So this will return some superclass. We have to tell this though, hey, I know this is a button, right? I'm the guy that made the UI, <laughs> right? So I know that that's a button. So I want to treat it as though it's a button, all right? And that's why I cast that to button, all right? Yes, because if we didn't do... If we didn't do that, then we couldn't treat it like it's a button. All right. Um, if we do that wrong, because it really doesn't know what it's getting. I'm just saying, give me the thing that has this ID. And again, could be the spinner control, could be the text box, could be anything. So we have to say, and again, we have inside information, right? We made the thing, so we know that it's a button. All right, so, okay, cast it as a button. Treat it as a button. All right, if we were to do that wrong, things would blow up. So that right there in itself, that statement is the glue part, right? Is the what part? It, yeah, I guess all this is the glue, really. But yeah, it, uh, this is part of the glue in that this is what's getting a pointer to that thing that's on my, uh, th that's on my uh, UI. All right. Calc. Set on click listener equals. Wow. What is this monstrosity of code? All right. Let's break it down a step at a time. And let, let's look at parts of this and ignore parts of this. Then We'll look at another part of it and another part of it until we've covered everything. In a nutshell, the statement that we have here says this. Calc set on click listener That's the shell of the statement. That's the statement that we're executing. <laughs> now that dash is actually, you know, more like this. A bunch of lines and then a semicolon down there. Because everything between the start paren and that end paren is the argument to this set listener. Set um, on click listener. In other words, all of this is the argument to that on, uh, to that set on click listener. Okay. All right. What do you suppose that means to set an on click listener? What does that mean? What are we doing there? 
Okay. Okay. All right. Anyone want to expand on that or? Right. Right. We're in the in the simplest in the simplest form. We're we're telling the code what to do when that button gets clicked. All right. What to do when the button gets clicked. Now, how do you tell the button what to do when the button gets clicked? Well, you create a class, all right, that's called onClickListener, and you define a onClick event of it, all right? Now, I could have, elsewhere in my code, defined a class that said, this is my calculate tip button listener. All right? That this is, that what this is going to do is that when they click on this button, this is a class that's going to handle that. But that class probably could only be used with this one GUI. Right? Because it's very tightly coupled to this user interface. All right. So therefore, I'm not going to define a separate class for this because I probably won't be able to reuse that class. All right. Really, all this class has is code. It doesn't do any of the calculations, right? So there's really no benefit in reusing it. It's just the glue to glue the user interface to the um, business logic, the, the meal class. So therefore, I don't make a separate class for that. I make this, which is called an anonymous class. In other words, this is a class with no name. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. This is an object with no name. It's of type view.onClickListener. All right. And I define the one method that is required on that class, the onClick event. And that's where I put the code that handles what gets done when the button gets clicked. It's a little confusing, all right? But the idea is, is that if we were to look in the, the, the Java, Java docs for the on... Um, for the set on click listener, we'll see that it requires, all right, a object of type view on click listener. So I could define a separate class of that type elsewhere, but there's really no need to because I'm never going to reuse it. So I'm just sort of defining this class in line. It's an anonymous class, nothing points to it. It's just I'm defining one of them here. And on that class that I'm creating, I am creating the onClick function, the onClick method, which gets invoked when that listener notices that it's clicked. So in a nutshell, if we could draw this, if we could draw what's going on here. All right. I have my button that is pointed to by the variable calc. All right. This is an object that has all bunch of different properties. All right. One of the properties is the on click listener property. Initially, there's nothing set to that. Right? There, there's no on click listener defined. So my on click listener property is nothing. However, when I hit this line of code, I say create an object of that type, which it does. It creates an on click listener object. And 
It creates in it the on click event, which has the code that I want to do. And now the on click listener for this button is a pointer to this object. It doesn't have an object name, doesn't have an object reference variable, other than the fact that this is this guy's on click listener. The right this guy is the anonymous class. In other words, there's no other pointers to it but the, the on click or, or anonymous object. There's no other pointers to it except it's this guy's on click listener. All right. So, what happens when we click a button? Let me go back to this. When we click a button, onclick listener gets notified and the onclick event fires off, or the onclick method fires off. So, clicking a button notifies the listener, hey, a button's been clicked, you need to do the onclick method that exists. And that's where we have this. All right. And so, what are we doing here? Well, here's where we're actually finally going in and, and, and merging our um, code, uh, our business logic code with our UI. I'm creating an instance of the meal class. All right. I'm doing the same thing with the edit text. Uh, text view and spinner as I did with the button. All right. I'm finding the thing on the on on the UI called a mount. That has the ID of a mount. It has the ID of tip, and it has the ID of service. And I'm creating uh, object references to those things. All right. I'm doing the casting appropriately so that way. Um, that way, um, I can treat each element like it really is. In other words, the thing that's referenced by RID service is a spinner control. So I got to cast it as a spinner control so that the code can treat it like a spinner control. All right. So I pointed to those things. I then effectively grab the cost from that edit text by using get text to string parse double. That converts it to a double. I set cost on my meal object. I then set, uh, pull from the spinner the uh, position 0, 1, or 2, which corresponds to my level of services, and set the service. I then call the calculate tip method and then I go and take the result in tip, convert it to string, and stuff it into the label, the text view um, for the tip. Questions on any of this? Now the Android stuff we're going to go over a lot. Really, it wasn't even really my intent to do this much with that, but since you seem to have a pretty good grip on the Java stuff, I thought rather than going to the command line and doing that, we would write code that would hook it to uh, an Android app so we could get our feet wet um, doing something pretty simple on this. Now, there's certainly more things that we could do to improve this. All right, What's probably the most glaring um, issue with this? Yeah, there's no air handling at all. All right, um, you know, so I could put anything in that text box and in go, and when it does its thing, it's just simply going to blow up on me. All right, let's see what it does do if I put something non-numeric in here. So if I go here and say average service and Oh, very good. I define that as a number when I dragged it over. All right, therefore I can't put garbage in. Oh, excellent. Let's try that. 
I can't put spaces, but if I do calculate, I'm guessing, yeah. All right, thank you. You know, it's a shame when you try to blow up something and it won't blow up for you. All right, but there, yeah, you're right. If I don't put anything in there. So that's something that we want to. Um, I do remember making that a number, by the way. Uh, now, after I see that I can only put numbers in it, let's find the code that, that did that. Well, what happened is there was an unhandled exception, so it just blew up. All right. One of the things we'll do next time, I'm not entirely sure what all we're going to do next time, um, is um, going in and, and doing some sort of uh, error checking and processing. Yes? Question? Okay. All right. Let's look at the... Android input type number. So that's what determined that it was a number. Now I don't expect you to know all these. Probably. I'm trying to remember what the options were when I had that. Can I put a negative in? Doesn't seem to be letting me. I might have defined it as a positive number when I did that. So I would go in and see what my options are on this, but again, unfortunately, There we go. Yeah, number signed. Okay, fair enough. All right. At any rate, yeah, some of the things that we can do maybe to improve it next time. I definitely want to do uh, air handling. All right, and make sure that we have a grip on, on that. Um, you know, we could do some things as was suggested, like with the enumeration and all that, but, um, um, you know, we'll, we'll see. I'll have to give that a little bit of thought. Now, your assignment for next time, and if you had me in a Java class, some of this work might have been done for you already, all right, or you, not done for you, but you may have done this already. So I want you to make a little rock, paper, and scissors game. All right, I want a spinner control where you pick rock, paper, scissors. You click the button. All right, it calls a object um, uh, that uh, takes your choice and generates a choice um, for your opponent. And then it tells you what you picked, what the opponent picked, and whether you want or not. So it's pretty simple. Um, pretty simple. Um, Thing. And really, our, our, our goal is, is to refresh our memory a little bit about Java and creating Java classes and uh, then getting, getting our feet wet with this. Uh, I'm not expecting great things with the, with the GUI, but, um, you know, um, at least have, have this tied to your, your Android front end. Other questions? Um, is there anything in particular you would be interested in reviewing next time as far as the assignment goes or anything along those lines? Any topic or? All right. I guess I'll give it some thought. If there's something that pops in your mind, maybe something well, that wasn't clear. I mean, there's a lot of issues I know we're working with. Um, 
at the very least, we want to handle the, the fact that there was an empty uh, field there. You know, that, that when we clicked an empty field, it blew everything up. That it shouldn't do that. So, we'll, uh, again, um, that'll be a good, uh, that, that'll definitely be one thing that we'll cover. That'll give us the opportunity to work on um, some air trapping and so on. Um, I might, instead of having a lecture, have an activity where you go and take this and, and tweak it and, and do that. Uh, I'm not sure. We'll give it some thought. If you think of anything in particular you're interested in, um, then, you know, by all means, let me know. All right.